after years of making beautiful machined aluminum shells for our beloved handhelds, BoxyPixel has finally released one for the original Nintendo Game Boy. This is one of the most anticipated DMG mods I've personally been waiting for. So let me show you how to build one of these beasts and why I think we can finally make the ultimate Game Boy DMG. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we'll be taking a look at BoxyPixel's latest creation and one that I think a lot of us have been waiting for, the beautifully crafted machined aluminum shell for the DMG. For those of you who are new to BoxyPixel, they're a company that specializes in making amazing machined aluminum shells for mostly Game Boy consoles, but also for other things like the Switch Joy-Cons or even mods like the Game Boy Macro. Anyway, I've been covering BoxyPixel products for years and they're amongst my favorite mods to do for these retro handhelds. For longtime viewers of the channel, you know I'm a bit of a nut when it comes to making consoles completely metal. The attention to detail of these kits are incredible and they give your handheld that premium, almost Apple-like finish. So with that, I can't wait to tackle the DMG shell, which is actually quite a bit different from BoxyPixel's previous products. All right, so in this video, I'll go over all the parts you'll need to make your very own all-metal BoxyPixel DMG. Then I'll show you how to build it step-by-step, step, go over all of its unique features, review the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing you'll need to do is pick up a few components from the BoxyPixel website, which are all laid out here. You'll of course need the aluminum shells, which come in a variety of colors. They'll also come with all the necessary screws you'll need for the build. Additionally, you'll need to order both the top and bottom 3D printed battery insulators. Do note that these are sold individually and not as a pair, so do make sure you order both. You'll also need to pick up these battery contacts, which will install on the battery insulators. Again, you'll need to order three of these as they do not come in a bundle pack. So don't forget to order three. And the last thing are these machined aluminum buttons. These are actually completely optional, but they are just so beautiful I had to put them in this build. You can also use original or aftermarket plastic buttons if you want, as the shell is completely compatible with both. Now everything here will cost you about 178 bucks, which includes shipping and the metal buttons. If you don't want the metal buttons, it'll cost you less at about 163. Next up, I also purchased an IPS kit for the DMG because this wouldn't be an ultimate build without one. Now the boxy pixel shell is compatible with the original DMG dot matrix display and should also work with most of the IPS kits out there. However, I did buy this one with OSD functionality from Retro Game Repair Shop. Having the OSD function is crucial for one specific reason, which I'll get into later in the video. This kit runs at about $53, but if you use my coupon code TITO at checkout, you'll save 10% on your purchase. And that code works on anything sold at Retro Game Repair Shop. Now, not entirely necessary is this 3D printed bracket. I printed this myself, but you can actually use the one that comes with the IPS kit and it should work just as well. All right, and the last thing you'll need is a donor console. You'll need to pull out the working motherboard assembly, speaker, button membranes, and the power switch cover. Okay, so that's everything you need, but I also have two optional items I'll be using for this build. First is this really nice IPS power booster board from Robot Retro, which should make using the IPS kit more efficient and reduce some of that audible hum. And I also bought this builder's fixture from Boxy Pixel, which should help make putting the console together just a bit easier. But like I said, these are both completely optional and aren't needed. Okay, so that's everything I'll be using for this ultimate DMG build. So without any further ado, let me show you how to put it all together. All right, so here I have my main board assembly for my donor DMG already extracted. And what we're gonna do first is desolder the power regulator board. Now do keep in mind, this is completely optional and not needed to install the BoxyPixel shell or the IPS kit. 
It's simply a higher quality regulator that provides efficient 5 volts of power to the IPS kit and will reduce some of that audible humming noise coming from the speaker. So with the power regulator board removed, just simply install the new IPS power booster in its place. And this is what it should look like all installed. Now let's prep the 3D printed power insulator brackets. We need to install these clip-on battery contacts onto them. Starting with the bottom bracket, just simply press fit them on making sure the bracket is oriented as shown. The bottom bracket requires two of the three contacts. And then install the last battery contact onto the top bracket as shown. Now let's prep the bottom boxy pixel shell. Let's go ahead and first drop in the top battery insulating bracket. Then drop in the power switch cover, followed by the DMG mainboard assembly. Once in, secure the main board with two of the longer 6mm screws included with the kit. And the smaller audio board with another two 6mm fasteners. Okay, next let's install the bottom bracket insulator. This is held in with a single 4mm screw. Great, the rear shell is fully assembled, and this is what everything should look like. Now let's prep the IPS kit. This is going to be really simple. The only difficult thing we need to do is solder in the speaker we removed from our donor console, and that's it. Now let's assemble the front shell. I'll be using the Boxy Pixel Builders fixture for this, but again, it's completely optional. First thing we're going to do is drop in the buttons and membranes. Next, grab the IPS panel, which in my case sort of came pre-assembled with the driver board already installed. So fold over the driver board onto the back of the IPS panel, and then slide it into the aligning bracket as shown. Carefully peel off the protective film, making sure to not touch the LCD. And then place the LCD assembly into the front shell. Now I need to be a bit careful because the LCD is just loosely held into the bracket. It would have been nice if the bracket had a tighter grip on the panel. Anyway, with the IPS in place, drop in the main front PCB as shown, making sure the speaker is seated properly. And then secure the board with four of the shorter 4mm screws. Next, insert the IPS driver board ribbon cable into the connector on the main PCB as shown. Then grab the included larger ribbon cable and insert it into the main board PCB in the rear shell with the contacts facing up. And then insert the other end of that ribbon cable into the board in the front shell housing as shown. This is a bit of a juggling act, but take your time and you'll get it. Then with the two halves of the console together, button it up with six of the longer six millimeter screws. Go ahead and drop in some batteries. Then put the battery cover on, securing it with the included custom thumb screw. Then flip the console over and remove any dust that may have settled onto the IPS panel. I'm using a camera lens duster for this and it works really well. Then carefully install the glass screen lens, making sure you're using either the one included with the kit or a custom colored one like this that has the correct size window for the larger LCD display. Then peel off the protective film, insert your game of choice, and turn on the unit. Now you'll immediately notice that the screen is not centered, and this is why getting an IPS kit with the OSD functionality is important, because now we can go ahead and adjust the image until it is centered perfectly. And there we go, we just built the ultimate metal DMG. I have to say that this was probably the easiest boxy pixel shell I have ever installed. And of course, as usual, the results are absolutely fantastic. With the exception of the optional IPS power booster mod, the only thing that you need to solder is the speaker, which is only two wires and really quite simple to do. All right, so this shell has some pretty interesting features that we haven't seen yet in a boxy pixel product before. So let's go over them. And just note, I won't be going over the features of the IPS kit since I already covered those in another video, which I'll have linked in the video description below. Okay, so definitely one of the more noticeable features of this kit is the added weight. This thing feels solid. When put on a scale, it comes in at an astounding 474 grams. 
Now that includes four batteries and I did have a game inserted. And just for some context, a standard DMG, also with a game and some batteries installed, weighs in at just 318 grams. So the boxy pixel shell adds roughly 150 grams to the overall weight, which is pretty crazy. Another feature that I actually really love and is sort of a departure from boxy pixels usual design language is the inclusion of a battery compartment. For many of you who are familiar with BoxyPixel products, you know that they usually internalize the battery with a rechargeable lithium ion one and delete the battery door entirely. Here on the DMG shell is an apparent first for the company. We do have a battery compartment allowing the unit to use standard double A's and I have to say, I actually really love this a lot. This does one very important thing, which it makes the installation a heck of a lot easier. Most of BoxyPixel's other kits require soldering and desoldering to add the necessary components that allow the use of a rechargeable lithium ion battery. Now, the way the battery compartment door is secured is also a really neat feature. BoxyPixel designed a custom thumb screw to hold the door down. It remains flush with the shell, so you don't even notice it when you're holding it in your hands, and it is easily opened and closed without the need for tools. It's actually really nice. Another interesting feature, if one could call it that, is the sort of cartridge guard on the back. On a standard Game Boy, this goes pretty high, securing the game cart and covering the label art. However, on the boxy pixel shell, the wall is quite a bit lower and actually exposes the game art, which is pretty cool. I think this was done primarily as a way to make production of the shells easier, since it would be pretty tough to make the wall overlap the base of the rear shell. And for those of you wondering, you don't have to worry. The game is super secure. It sort of reminds me of the analog pockets cartridge slot, except the boxy pixel shell has guards on either side, protecting the cart from accidental bumps. And the last feature is that boxy pixel actually future proofed the shell by including cutouts in the battery compartment for the addition of a rechargeable lithium ion battery. The cutouts in the battery compartment can fit the recharging circuitry, while you'll also notice on the bottom an opening for a USB-C port. I think it's great that he included this. All right, so those are the primary features of the boxy pixel shell. But now let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say first and foremost, I absolutely love the feel of this thing. It's got a great heft and it just feels ultra premium. The anodized finish on the aluminum is smooth and cool to the touch. I also surprisingly really like that this kit uses regular AA batteries. I really hope BoxyPixel incorporates this as an option to his existing catalog of products in the future. And not only can you use regular AA batteries, but the shell has been future-proofed to allow for the use of a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. Now that's pretty awesome. And not only is it versatile in the battery department, but it can also use a variety of IPS kits as well as the original dot matrix display. The shell's window is already large enough to accommodate both the regular and larger sized LCDs, making this an easy drop-in solution for many IPS kits. Okay, so those are the pros. BoxyPixel managed to do some really great things with this new shell. But now let's get into the cons. So I usually think it's pretty difficult to find something wrong with these shells and the DMG is no exception. One of the few cons I could think of is that thumb screw. While I love its design, I'm just a bit worried that it could be easily lost and that it could also easily break. It just seems a bit fragile. Also, aluminum is just a very soft metal, so definitely do not over tighten the thumb screw as you could strip the threads, which would make it actually pretty difficult to keep the battery door closed. However, if you are careful, I think the probability of these issues materializing is pretty low. And the only other con is, you guessed it, price. As you already know, these machined aluminum shells are premium products, and they're priced as such. Just to get everything you need for the build will set you back about 180 bucks. Add in the IPS kit, and that cost jumps to about 230. Not cheap by any measure. Other than that, I have to say I absolutely love this shell, and it is definitely one of the easiest boxy pixel or even DMG mods you can do, and just get simply amazing results. Now, if this is the first time you've seen a metal shell like this one, and you really like it, I've actually covered all of Boxy Pixel's metal shells and even made a playlist for them all that you can check out right here. I covered the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Joy-Cons, and even a similar emulation build modeled after the DMG. So definitely give it a look. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next Thursday.